All right, sweet. So, um, yeah, today we're going to be talking about destructuring. So I got this list of Mistborn books from the Brandon Sanderson website. I have read, I think, almost every one of these. I don't know. I don't think I've read this one, but I've read these twice, and these are awesome. Every book on Brandon Sanderson, Brandon Sanderson's website, just totally amazing. So give these a look for sure. Um, but uh, I was just thinking about what to share with you today, and I decided to share destructuring um, something from my ES6 workshop, um, something that I actually kind of discovered or, or realized when uh, demonstrating destructuring here in this example um, that somebody kind of gave me the idea of and I figured out um, during the workshop. Uh, you can actually watch the workshop um, on my playlist here for my talks and workshops. Um, there's part one and a part two. Um, lots of really good stuff there. It's all free on YouTube, so go check that out. Um, but anyway, here are our two examples. One's an object, the other, other is an array. And um, yeah, just to do basic destructuring, if I wanted to get the unit, I would say weather.unit, right? Um, but what if I wanted to get the location as well, weather.location. Okay, so now that's uh, two lines of code and it's kind of repetitive and stuff. And so destructuring allows us to just um, provide what is called a um, object pattern, I think is what it's called here. Let's find out for sure. Go to astexplorer.net and hmm, weird. It seems to be busted for me. Let me try in another browser. Because this happened to me recently. And I was told that it is fine. Yeah. Hmm. My browser is messed up. But anyway, what? Oh. Um. Okay. Try this again. There we go. Okay. Weird. Um, maybe later. Okay, yeah, so here if you highlight this, you're gonna see object pattern. So that's what this thing is called. It's called an object pattern. Um, and uh, yeah, so it looks sort of like an object, but it behaves very differently. Um, there are a lot of interesting things you can do with this. We can add um, a, a default assignment. So if weather doesn't have a unit property, then it will get the default here. And so that's called an assignment pattern. Um, right there, we can also alias it to something else. And so that will be an assignment pattern. Here, let's see. So we've got pattern, that's the whole thing. You can see it's uh, highlighting in yellow. And then we have properties of the object pattern. So if I add another one, uh, location, uh, then those are all going to be properties of our assignment pattern um, or of our object pattern. So we've got multiple properties. Uh, and then um, for this object property, it has a couple of things. There's uh, computed in shorthand. So I wonder if we could do um, foo plus bar stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever used that before, but yep, it's computed. That's interesting. So you, you could potentially have foo equals high and r equals the string three, I don't know, and then you're getting the high three property off of weather. And then you'll, you'll have to alias that one because that, um, that can't be a variable name. So you have to alias it. That's why it was a syntax error before. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of nifty. Um, computed, and that I guess makes it have a binary expression as the key, which makes sense. Cool. Okay, so anyway, going back to our first one, uh, the value is well, here, let's take the, the simple one first. The key is just an identifier. The value is that same identifier. Um, whereas um, in this one, the object property has a key that is a binary expression because it's computed. And uh, the value is an identifier. I'm not sure what to do about this method thing. I don't know how you could ever make something that's a method when you're destructuring. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but then we have the identifier as the value, so what the um, variable should be called. And um, yeah, and then if we take a look at this first one again, oh, we want 
companies to this first one that has an assignment. The value is going to be an assignment pattern rather than just an identifier. And that assignment pattern um, has a left and a right. Uh, so if here, let's see if we took this off, then the value is now just an identifier. So what makes it an assignment pattern is by having this assignment. And uh, on the left will be the identifier, so what the variable will be called. And on the right will be um, a string literal, or it could be anything. It could be um, a function, whatever you want the default value to be. And you also don't have to have an assignment pattern for this to work. You can just do that. And now if we look, the value is um, still an assignment pattern, but it doesn't have... Oh yeah, the left is um, the identifier because that now, because it's not alias, that's now going to be the, um, the variable name. So that's the left and then the right. So anyway, now that you've looked into the ASTs a little bit, it's kind of fun. Let's take a look at some of the cool things you can do with this particular feature. Um, so here I'm going to pull out location. So I'll just say unit and location. We got those um, in the right spot. Now uh, let's take a look at today. What if we wanted today? And we, what if we wanted to get the max from today? So we could say max equals today, right? But we can actually destructure things here. And let's put max right here, max. Uh, so then we could actually take this destructuring and destructure the destructured thing. Um, but now we're, um, yeah. Let's see, I'm going to call this, well, let's just get rid of that. Now we're getting a syntax error because today is not defined because um, now, here, actually, let's take a look at what this does. I should have kept that thing open. Do, 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 do. On AST Explorer. Okay. Here we go. So if we look at what this does, um, that object property has a key that's an identifier. Um, and then the value is another object pattern. And I don't see anything in the AST here to indicate um, the what's going on here. But what, what is happening is there's no um, value getting or variable getting created for this value. So I guess any object property whose value is an object pattern will not have a, um, a variable getting instantiated. So that's kind of annoying. And this is what I learned when I was giving my um, workshop. And so I was like, well, I wonder what would happen if I just destructure that too. And it works. So you can, if you want to do nested destructuring, then this is the syntax for that. Um, and then if you want to destructure something that you've done nested destructuring for, you just destructure that as well. And so now you can get today, then you can also do nested destructuring of max. That was the, mo the main thing that I wanted to, to show off here. I actually didn't plan on going into AST Explorer at all, but hopefully that was kind of interesting. Uh, another interesting trick with arrays is the way that you destructure arrays is if we say, uh, let's say we wanted to get bands of morning. So I'm going to just do um, uh, like normally we'd say bands equals mistborn books at what is it for right now four or five there we go at index five we get bands of morning so to destructure arrays you're gonna instead of putting it inside of curly braces you put it in brackets and then um you'd have the first here it's see final empire and then well and then hero and then alloy and then shadows and then bands okay but I don't need all those variables, so I'm just going to get rid of those and leave blank spaces. Um, and that's how I can get bands, is I just leave a blank space for every single one of these that I don't actually need. Whoops. So that's kind of, that's kind of neat, but it's also like really confusing. Um, okay, you had to count one, two, three, four, five. Okay, at index five, that's how that's going to work. So somebody thought of the idea that an array is actually just kind of an, a special object. And so we can say, uh, let's destructure this as an object instead. And what are the keys of an array object? Well, they're numbers. And so let's say index five and alias that to bands. Ta-da! 
So that's kind of handy. Um, yeah. So that, that's a little trick. I don't really use that a whole lot. I don't often have to destructure arrays like this. Um, yeah, I don't normally destructure arrays very often. But if I wanted to grab a specific index and for some uh, reason or another, I didn't want to just uh, use something like that, then this would be a good way to do it. I could see myself uh, doing something like this if I wanted to uh, get a couple of these, like, and then index seven, hello, Mancer, um, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it that I wanted to show today. Um, I hope that's helpful, and it's good to be back. I will see you all next time. Peace.